Shalom, it's Ruben Abramov, and this week's Haftarah is for the Parsha of Korach. Let's talk about Korach for a minute. Korach challenged Moses' right to be the leader of the Jewish people. And subsequently to that challenge, Moses then appeals to the nation of Israel, and he asks them, have I done anything improper? Have I taken anything from you? Did I take money to do this job? So he's showing his hands are clean. I'm an honest leader. Now, the uh, men of the great assembly who decided what Haftorah is to read, picked from the books of the prophets on the book of Samuel, Shmuel. He was a judge. He was a spiritual leader of the Jewish people. He lived before the building of King Solomon's temple, and he appointed the first king to the nation of Israel, Shaul. So, just before the Haftarah starts, you have the coronation of King Shaul, of which Israel, the Israelites, forced, pushed to have a king. They were surrounded by other nations that had kings. They didn't want to be led by a spiritual leader anymore. They wanted a king. They wanted a military, military leader. Well, they got one, Shaul. And then, at the beginning of chapter 11, of which this Haftarah ends and starts at the ending of chapter 11, you have this bizarre story of this King Nachash, king of the Ammonites, who attacked, or was about to attack, the Jews that lived in the area of Gilad, or Gad, on the eastern part of the Jordan River, part of the Ruvain, Gad, and Chatsi Menashe, half of Menashe, that did not live in the land of Israel. And he says that, I will not kill you if you allow me to poke your right eyes out. Bizarre. It turns out that they found in the Dead Sea Scrolls a few sentences that were deleted, was omitted, that explains why he was doing that and who he was. But that's a story for another time. So to the Haftarah is you have now Shmuel anointing Shaul the king at Gilgal, which is where the tabernacle, the Mishkan, stayed for many, many years. And they're all celebrating and giving sacrifices in Karbanot. Then it comes time for Samuel for his farewell speech. And he says, similarly to Moses, did I ever take anything? Did I take a donkey? Did I take any animal to be paid for what I do? Did I take money for what I do? I never took anything. My hands are clean. Step forward if you could say a bad word about me. Public. Public declaration. You can say something bad, say it now. He was 52 at the time that he passed away. And he's towards the end of his life. First part. Then, he says to these people that you should not have demanded a king. It wasn't the right time yet. Yes, God said you should appoint yourself a king, kill off Al-Malek, and build yourself a holy temple. But it wasn't time to do so yet. And that he bawled them out for demanding that. Yes, they got their king, but you know what happens in the future. They took Shaul out off the throne very, very quickly. Then the third part of the Haftarah is that the Jewish people are criticized. And they are reminded of how God when they removed themselves from God, the Jewish people, he sent Sisra after them with the story of Devorah, and he sent the Philistines after them and the Moabites after them for worshipping Baalim because they thought maybe Baal was the source, or they worshipped Ishtar, fertility goddesses. They thought that that's where their blessing came from. And then he reminds them that when we're in good standing with God, he sent us leaders like Gidon, like, <coughs> excuse me, Shimshon, Yiftach Giladi, and he says, like myself, look at what a great leader you had. And look what happened with Nachash earlier, just earlier, how when God wanted to protect you, Shaul was victorious in war. And this is a miracle how God saved these people. And then now he explains to them that, listen, this is the summertime. It is a time for harvesting. 
It would be a curse if rain fell, because it would smash down the wheat and make it very hard to harvest. He's saying, watch. And he makes it rain. And he shows them the difference between a blessing and punishment. And he tries to remind the Jewish people, please, listen to God, that Shaul is the king, but more importantly than a, a human being being the king, that you have to remember that God is the creator and the source of all beauty and oneness and unity. And that is who we should be connecting ourselves to. And in the f- closing pasuk it says, Ki lo yitosh Hashem et amo. That Hashem is not going to forsake, He's not going to abandon, He's always going to be in the same place for us. And that it is up to us to know where that place is, to know what that path is of holiness and oneness and unity, and that we should all live in shalom and in peace, and respect the holy leaders that we have, the spiritually driven few that we have. Enjoy the Haftarah.